as we continue on, I think it was at maybe a day or two later, we went into a North Atlantic storm. And you talk about a, a storm. I've never seen anything to this day like that. Dane, we used to go down, the bar would go down into these, the bottom of these waves. And honest to God, I could not see nothing but water. You swear you were going down, like you were diving right down into it. And, and then we'd come up on top of the darn rave and the prop would come out of the water and that ship would shake. Right. Oh right. man, yeah. And I mean, you'd swear that how that, but that had to really be good welding because how that thing held together with that, with a load of that much weight and still do that. Well, naturally, we dropped out of the convoy. The convoy said, you're on your own. We'll get together again after the storm. Well, I mean, we didn't have to worry about U-boats then during the storm. But uh, so we, I, I would say we were in that darn storm for about a good two, two and a half days. Now, I never really got sick. I had, I was always... Uh, had a hungry feeling, you know, but all we had was, was uh, uh, coffee and, and salt crackers. That's all we ate. Uh, I mean, they, you couldn't keep dishes on the table or anything. I'm surprised that they could make coffee, you know. But anyhow, uh, that's all we had. Here again, we went through the Panama Canal and uh, went out to the <coughs> New Guinea and the Philippines. <laughs> this trip took a, went from November of 1944 to June of 1945. We hauled a bunch of troops and, uh, and an LST, I think it was an LST, we, we towed one of them up to uh, the Philippines. Uh, What's an LST, sorry? A uh, landing craft. Okay. You know, them, them big flat, they used to, they were different sizes. They were LSTs, LSCs, uh, but anyhow, we towed one of them up there. God, we laid an anchor there, I guess, sometimes two, three months to uh, get it unloaded. I mean, uh, there were that many ships ahead of us, and and they were didn't have the equipment to, like you know like you, <laughs> New York or, or New Orleans uh, to unload you. We used to, in fact, they used to even unload us onto barges, and then they would haul the barges in there. The days really were dragged on. We couldn't go ashore, you know. It was it was too dangerous, and uh, so. Uh, <clears throat> I got the bright idea one day. There's the shore is lined with with junk from bombings and stuff, you know, and an aircraft shot down. <coughs> and so I, I saw these these. Uh, I had to go ashore with the captain for something, and uh, I saw these. These, uh, uh, <clears throat> they looked like big bombs. Uh, they were uh, gas tanks that, that uh, airplanes could drop. They would take off with them tanks and how they could stay in the air longer. And as they used up a tank, they would just drop them. So there was a, there was a couple of them there and I talked to the, the bosun into letting me, let me uh, bring back two of those those uh, tanks, and uh, so he said. We said he said a, a lifeboat ashore with me, and I, I loaded them onto the lifeboat, and I hauled them back to the ship. They both and they hauled them up for me, and uh, I always got real familiar with the chief engineer, because then I I could borrow tools, you know, and stuff. Uh -huh. So what I did is, 
I cut a hole in there, big enough for me to to get in and out, like like a kayak. Okay. You know I mean? So, and then I I got scrounged up some boards and stuff to make a seat, and I did made that made two of them. See, with with, with the holes in. And then I took two by fours and molded them together. They were about maybe a foot apart, you know. And and so then then I I, I bummed a, a paddle off of the, the bosa and I I when I launched the thing I, I paddled it into shore. And and I mean I never went into into the interior. I always was picking on the shore for stuff. I would go in and and there would be all Always a lot of uh, stainless steel uh, sheeting and stuff from airplanes, and that's what I used to make watch bands out of. Uh, and so anyhow, you know, I would go ashore and, and pack a bunch of that off and come back. And so th this day I, I paddled this thing ashore, and it, it worked real good. And the guys on the ship, they're all laughing at me, you know. And I monkeyed around, I don't know, a couple hours, and I paddled back. And so then I, I said, uh, uh, I wanted to bring it ashore, and the boatswain said, oh, just tie it up down there, and uh, uh, down near the stern, you know. And so, okay, I tied it up, and they put a rope ladder over for me, and I cut back on ship. Next morning, I come out, and the thing is gone. Somebody stole it. I never saw it after that. So, wait, so where would it have where would it have gone? Somebody on the ship stowed it away somewhere? Some other ship must have some guy saw it and, and or it could have even been one of the one of the natives you know that saw it and and, and just went because they were always out coming out peddling stuff, you know. Right, the locals, yeah. Yeah. So it could have been one of them. I but I never saw the dark we were there for another month, and I, all that time I never saw it again. <laughs> Where would you work on this project? Where Did you do this out in the quarters? Deck. Right out on deck. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is just during, and this is while, this is after the, the Walcott would have uh, dropped off supplies and you were waiting for... Yeah, they, and they had the, what we used to call them wolf packs. They would be at packs of them, and I mean, they would... No, it was, uh, but anyhow, it, it, uh... Well, they had invaded Scandinavia by that point. Oh, so yeah. they were on both sides of the Baltic. Yeah, yeah. I'm still trying to get an idea of the size of the convoy. So your tanker convoy, uh, you say 50? There could be 50 tankers in a convoy? I would say about 50, 40 to 50 tankers. And and then was there any support from the Navy or other other type? If there was 40, 50 tankers, how many escorts would they have? Like I say, I know of that we had, they had uh, uh, two destroyer escorts. And uh, here again, depending upon the size of the convoy, they, they could maybe have up to four, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> but see, now this was pretty early in the war. And they didn't have that many. I mean, they were building them like crazy. They were so <clears throat> you did with what you had. Yeah, we would have about four to five rows of ships across, and then probably about the same uh, going the other way. And uh, and there was always a cruiser. I think it might they might have called them cruisers that. It was a bigger ship, and he was in the lead. And then sometimes they had a couple on the tail end also. You know, it just depended what was available at that time. But uh, 